bang their heads with emotion. This is the name of the presentation. And today we'll try to learn how to really bang the hands, uh, the heads, not the hands, of the, emo uh, of the audience sitting in the room. When we talk about uh, one more thing, do you, can you guys in the back of the room, can you hear me? Is the microphone working? Okay, perfect. When we talk about emotions, everybody knows that, right? The laughter, ha, 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 the sadness, <laughs> the love, the hate. Those are the emotions everybody experiences in their life. And I'm sure everybody is aware that they are very important also in our presentations. If you want to keep people interested, we need to use those emotions. And you already know it. So I will not tell you why it's important. You know it. What we will actually talk about is something different. I will try to give you a Viagra <laughs> for your presentations, a special pill that you can use and instantly your presentations will become more emotional. <laughs> is it possible? We'll see. This Viagra has actually three ingredients. As you can see here, structure, content, and delivery. This is how we can enhance our speeches. Of course, if you would talk about emotional speeches, you could find like 100 things you can do better to make it more emotional. But we don't have all the day for this workshop. We have just 45 minutes. So we'll focus on these three main areas, on some specific examples. <coughs> A structure, I guess everybody understands that it depends how you structure your presentation, how you put information after information to make it more emotional. Regarding the content, we'll talk about what to put into that presentation. And the third one, delivery, it's about how you present it. Now let's start with the structure. And there's one very, 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 very important thing about structure if you want to have it emotional. Use contrast. Contrast. Contrast white with black, red with blue, whatever. Use the contrast, use the opposite things. When it comes to the structure, this is the most important thing to make your speech or presentation emotional. For some people, it might not be clear enough, like how should I contrast my, uh, my presentation or why should I do it, you know? I think the best example how to explain this is on food. Imagine typical food, this could be typical Indian food. Uh, we usually eat something like, for example, meat with sauce, and we use side dish, potatoes, rice, bread, whatever. Why do you think we use this side dish? It's actual question. <laughs> yes, <laughs> so easy. Yeah, exactly, because the taste of bread, of rice, there's not a big taste, right? It's something that is really like bland. And it helps us to contrast the taste of the meat. So we feel it better. If you would get meal that is only sauce with the meat, maybe somebody would be happy, like, oh, more meat. But <laughs> actually, you wouldn't like, you wouldn't enjoy the meal so much. I'm sure in Poland you have some cabbage soup, right? Do you eat it with bread? We do in Slovakia. OK, some people don't. OK. <laughs> But if you do, you have the contrast on your tongue. Now, some people think, you know, I should put a lot of emotion in my speech. It should be emotion after emotion after emotion, 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 emotion. What do we get this way, actually? We get one line. You know, our presentation becomes monotonous. Because if there's just emotion and nothing to contrast it against, People start listening. So what we actually want, what we need to achieve, is presentation like this. Presentation where there are some emotional parts, then I go with something neutral, maybe some facts, maybe something less, less emotional. Then I go back to emotion. I release it in short bursts, like <laughs> And between, there needs to be the rice or the bread for contrasting. <coughs> Another thing is, it's not only about making the speeches uh, contrasting in a way that emotion and no emotion. You should also think about 
making those emotions contrasting, using both the positive emotions and the negative ones. If you would have speech which is all positive emotions, people will not believe your story. You know, it's not real life. In real life, you go up, but you go down. If you would try to paint a picture with positive white color, and you would use just white color, you would get this picture. What do you see here? Nothing. Yeah, that's exactly what people would hear in your presentation. If you would go only with negative emotions, what would you hear? Nothing. You know, it would be too much negative. Nobody would listen. But if you take these two things into one presentation, if you use positive and negative emotions, and if you are good at this, you get maybe something beautiful. Oh. <laughs> Now, let's try it out together. I will need a volunteer for uh, exercise. Uh, okay, Pavlina. <laughs> Welcome. <clears throat> Our volunteer will try how is it to make speech just positive, and we will see if we like it. Okay? It will be short table topics, like two minutes. I will use this car. No, I will not use them now. Yeah, the topic can be first date or dating, okay? It's <laughs> how you approach it. And please show us presentation that is only good. Everything was good. Everything was just awesome. And we'll see if we like it. Okay, do you need 30 seconds to prepare? You can start. Okay. Okay, so my first date. It was um, amazing. I think it was my, the best day of my life. Uh, it was like uh, one year ago, and I remember everything. <coughs> when I wake up, I just start thinking about uh, my <coughs> partner, and uh, we, we just go to a restaurant, but it was so beautiful. The, everywhere was flowers, and it was like from um, beautiful um, movies. Yeah, <laughs> we just looking at uh, each other, and we eat some delicious food, and it was amazing, amazing. And he is so cute. So, <laughs> and, so yeah. and now <laughs> we are together and <laughs> yeah, it was uh, really, you, yeah, really, it was the best day of my life. Okay, thank you. <laughs> because this presentation was short, I saw that you are still interested in the story, okay? <laughs> But if it was 30 minutes talk about how it was awesome, <laughs> nobody would listen in the end. Let's try the other approach. Now I will give another volunteer, David here, uh, the, <laughs> the cards, which he will use. Uh, Paulina will do the same speech again, but this time when David shows green card, it will be po positive emotions, and when he shows red card, <coughs> she needs to switch to negative emotions. So we will hopefully see some kind of emotional roller coaster dating, and we'll see if it's more interesting. Okay? So. <coughs> okay, first he was late. <laughs> You could clearly see the second story was better, right? <laughs> because there was something happening. It wasn't just awesome, awesome, awesome. 
And it's the same with our speeches. We need, if we want to have emotional speeches, we need to structure it this way. We need to put there something positive, something negative, something neutral, and keep things changing. If you keep it the same way, you will lose the interest of the audience. The second thing, second ingredient of the Viagra I was talking about was the content. And when I talk about content, there are two rules we can use to make our speeches emotional. One of the rules is to make your speeches as a shorter story with richer descriptions. <coughs> Remember this, this is very important. Short and rich, short and rich. Short and rich. <laughs> this will help you remember. <laughs> <laughs> it's covered. <laughs> we, if we think about how to make it short and rich, what does Yaro mean by this? You know, normally when you prepare a presentation, you have some point and you usually support it with some kind of substories, right? Substory one, substory two, substory three. What you need to do if you want to do a really emotional presentation is cut out everything you don't need and keep just one story there. For example, substory two. Then, with the space that you gained by cutting off everything else, you need to fill it with the rich descriptions. What does it mean, rich descriptions? It means you will talk about the things that were happening in that story that you could hear, you could smell, you could see all these descriptions. But rich doesn't mean pathetic. It doesn't mean that you should talk about everything that was in the room, right? If I will want to talk about a uh, sad evening at home, I will not tell you my carpet was red, my walls were white, uh, my uh, lamps were neon, blah, blah, blah. It's not relevant to the emotion. You need to describe only the things that will trigger this kind of emotion in the minds of the audience. So if I'm sitting in that room and I want to give the sad, melancholic idea, what can I talk about? How can I describe the setting? It was a dark, gloomy day. Dark, gloomy day. Foggy. Sorry? Foggy. Foggy, foggy or raining. The wind was uh, quealing behind the windows. The, the candle fire was flickering in the air. Those are the things that paint the picture of the audience. And this is what we need to do in our emotional speeches. We paint the picture. You don't need to exp explicitly say, it was a sad evening or I was sad. They will know it because you painted the picture with those things. So make your stories rich with relevant descriptions. The rule number two regarding the content will be using rhetorical devices. You probably know it from high school, right? Uh, metaphor, metaphor, anaphor, uh, alliterations, uh, similes, or how do you read this? I actually don't know. Similes. similes, similes, similes. All these things are present in all the famous speeches you know about. If you go back and analyze Winston Churchill speeches, uh, Martin Luther King speeches, um, anyone that made great speeches, you will find these things in their text. You remember uh, Martin Luther King saying, I have a dream, I have a dream, I have a dream. Correct me if I'm wrong, I think that's the anaphor actually. Right? And if you use these kind of things, again, you make your speeches much more emotional. Usually it's not something that you can just make up on the go, it's something you need to prepare in advance. Besides these rhetorical devices, it's also good to use strong and vivid words. So instead of, I like to go to cinema, I can say, I love to go to cinema. Instead of saying that the guy stood up, I can say, he jumped up excited. You know, I can use those strong, vivid words again to paint the pictures in the minds of my audience. So it's very important also to use this right language, right words that, that will paint the pictures in the minds. <coughs> now we'll play some game, everybody in the, in the room for the second exercise. Who knows this kind of bird? Twitter, yeah, almost everybody knows Twitter. You know what's special about Twitter? 
short messages I've heard, 140 characters long maximum, okay? This is what we will do. I will give you some kind of long stories, and what you will need to do is write down um, kind of description or write down the story of that story in only 140 characters maximum. If you manage to do it in 30 or in 40, good for you. Okay, so the, the, the less the better. You can use your phone, you can write it as a text message, you will see how many characters you used, okay? And if you think it's something impossible to make emotional story in 140 characters, it's not. There used to be some kind of contest online and I happened to find one of the winners, maybe some of you know it. Short story, 42 characters and so powerful. You see? And we can do this in all of our speeches, to use as little but paint the pictures in the minds. And what we will use for this exercise, because I don't want to read you here long stories, we'll use movies, movies that you know. Um, I will show you a list of the movies, you will pick two that you like, that you know, that you remember, and you will try to write the story of the movie in a Twitter length. Okay? I tried to do the same thing with Forrest Gump. It's not on the list, you don't need to think about it now. And for me, for example, it would be... If, oh, actually, do you remember what was happening in Forrest Gump? Yes or no? It was running. Yeah, he was running a lot. <laughs> if, if you remember, he was a guy, guy with good heart. He got to places, he got to meet Elvis Presley, uh, Richard Nixon, he went to war, he was leading hippie movement. Whatever, everything was happening, but one thing that was eluding him was the love of his life. So, if I should put it into a Twitter status, what would I write? Good heart can lead you to places beyond your wildest, wildest dreams, but will it lead to your love? And please do the same thing for the movies on this list. Okay? Choose two of the movies that you know, and you have five minutes now to prepare the statuses or the these stories of these movies in that short length. Try it. We'll read the ones who will feel they, they did a good job, we'll read it all out. Five minutes. Okay, pens down and mobile phones. Let's see. So who got something for metrics? Okay guys. <coughs> sorry, sorry, can you stand up and talk loud? The system is in your head. Understand, accept, destroy, and live in your career. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, this life an illusion. Where are you? Who are you? Wake up. Oh, okay. Avatar, who got Avatar? Come on, guys. Nobody got Avatar. Okay, home alone. Perfect. Push out what you wish for. Sometimes your biggest dream can turn out to be a nightmare. Oh, okay. <laughs> Who else? Who else had. Yeah? Uh, young boy uh, that he is home alone. Tips also. Ah, okay. <laughs> what father? Authority. I need to buy myself a cat. Oh. <laughs> Are you afraid of gangsters? Make sure that after watching this movie you are not start to like them. Oh, okay. <laughs> Star Wars. We are here as a Star Wars team. Okay, what about the Terminator? Terminator. You want it? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not board, however. If a machine could learn the value of life, well, we cannot. Embrace your life here, now, and ever after. Oh. Yeah. Terminator or Terminator? Oh. <laughs> Arnold, Arnold, have you killed everyone? No, but I be back. <laughs> Terminator. Terminator. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Machine 
machines are wiser than you think. They over from the human being on our planet. Nobody is alive but you. Do you want to stay? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Economic and technological progress is, is a great thing. But uh, use your minds too and don't forget to turn, on, turn off the light when you leave uh, Babylon. <laughs> <laughs> Star Wars, as a last thing, sorry guys, we've got other things. Oh. Are you not in? <laughs> okay, Star Wars. Uh, you've got the power to change world for better or worse. It depends what you want and mentors you choose. Mm, okay. Mr. Time, you can learn more. Okay, okay, so let's go with Schindler's, Schindler's list. Short list that means lucky. Check the story behind that. Willingness to help people against all the odds. Okay. Pianist. We got pianist. What is the sound of music at world's end? Uh, sorry, again. What is the sound of music at world's end? Ah. single mother uh, being fired from the job, her boss was making advances on her. You know, there was a lot of uh, tension and a lot of things that were happening, uh, good ones and bad ones. And I remember that Peter, you know, as his experience, he used body language, he uh, used vocal variety. But still in the end of this thrilling speech, I didn't feel a single emotion. Am I a monster? <laughs> No, Peter did something wrong, or actually he forgot something. He forgot the key thing for every emotional speech. Can you guess what it is? Face expressions. Face expressions, mimics, exactly. Mimics are the, are the window to emotional soul, okay? I just made it up. <laughs> Mimics is basically how you show the audience what they should feel. Peter had his speech with poker face. He didn't change his face when he was talking about shouting. He didn't change his face when he was talking about crying. And that's why I didn't believe in these emotions. But if you try yourself in your presentation and you start smiling wildly at people, you will see more and more faces in there will start smiling back. And if you talk about your grandmother's funeral and it's something sad and you will show the sad face how it touched you inside, you will see that people will start mimicking your face. They will do the same thing. And this way, they will feel the same emotion you want to do in their minds. So mimics is an extremely important thing if you want to have emotional presentation. Or at least emotional moment in your presentation. 
Okay. Uh, another illustration of this is maybe I would say everybody knows emoticons, emoticons. Or how would you read that? You know the smiley faces from Facebook, from mobile phone. Why do you think they are using faces for showing emotions? Because faces show emotion, right? <laughs> That's why they call it emotional icons, emoticons. Actually, I can't show my whole body. That's why I use emoticons. Ah, uh, okay. You can't show your body something. Okay, I know they do. <laughs> but this is another illustration of emotions through faces. The second thing about delivery is the vocal variety. It's not enough if you just use this one and you forget about facial expressions, as we saw in the uh, example with Peter. But this is also extremely helpful for making emotions in the audience. And you most probably know how to vary your voice, right? What kind of variety you can use in uh, our speeches? What can we change? Loud, quiet. Uh, loud, quiet. Fast, fast slow. Fast, slow. Fast, slow. Pitch. Whisper, yes. Whisper, shout, pitch, yeah, all these things we can use to <coughs> contrast our voice, right? The contrast is back in full power. We need to contrast also our voice. We need to go for a while, we, can, we need to go fast, 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 <coughs> bam, then we slow down. We need to go louder for some part of the presentation, then we go more quiet. To keep people interested, to have the contrast there also in the voice. Another thing that we can use is, of course, stressing the words. Important things, stressed. <laughs> and using. These are the things to make speeches emotional. Now, we'll have another nice exercise together. And this time I will ask for four volunteers to come in front of the audience. Four volunteers. One, two, three. One more, one more. Four. Thank you very much. From here, face the audience. Now, I will show you one uh, really not emotional word, or actually it's uh, three words or two words. Piero <laughs> Bismias. <laughs> can, can you read that? Piero Gib Orgasm. Piero Gib Orgasm, okay, good. <laughs> you can read it the way you want. The, the important thing is the word itself, it's not making much emotion for most of the people. <laughs> but we'll use what we've just learned about mimics and vocal variety to show that we can actually project emotion into anyone. So guys, I will tell you how to, uh, I will tell you always emotion, and you try to say that Piero gives me SM in that emotion, okay? If I tell you angry, you say Piero gives me SM. If I tell you other emotion, you do that. And I always will read the emotion and you will go one, 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 okay? And we'll see, we'll watch how they can do it. So, let me just load my... Yeah, okay, David, you start with neutral. Neutral. Pierogi. Okay, so. <laughs> Angry. Pierogi z mięsem. Happy. Pierogi z mięsem. Sad. Pierogi z mięsem. Embarrassed. Pierogi z mięsem. Excited. Pierogi z mięsem. Sexy. Pierogi z mięsem. Sleazy. 
sleazy, it's like sleazy. Uh, oh. <laughs> the broken. How they project this emotion. <laughs> okay. You could so you could see it, but I'm sure everybody would like to try it. So you can now uh, turn to your partners to make couples, and we'll do the same thing. I'll read you. Okay? And always, we start with the left partner, continue with right. Left is the end of the presentation. I see it got you really excited. Yes. That's great. That's great. But it's time to sum up the presentation so that you remember everything that we said. I hope you will, of course, you will not remember everything, but I hope you will remember at least something that will help you. So to sum up, Enough of Viagra, Viagra. Let's go with what are the three key fields where we can enhance the speeches. Structure, content, delivery. Perfect. What about structure? What is the important, most important thing? Is contrast. Exactly. How about content? What was the rule first rule? Rich. Short and rich. You remember the guy, right? I will not show it again. Don't worry. Second room? Rhetorical devices. Ah, yeah, rhetorical devices. Then we talked about delivery. Two things again. What was the first one? Mimics. Exactly. And the second one? Book of variety. Ladies and gentlemen, now I feel that you are prepared to leave this room and bang their heads with emotion. Woo!